Okay, guys. Now we're on Facebook, and I can see I'm crooked. Okay. Are you? I see some of you coming on, and I do apologize. I don't have any idea what in the world's taking place with uh, with the online streaming tonight. And, and Stacy, I hope you don't have the same problems, but something going on here at the church. Uh, hey, Sister Meg, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to continue where I'm at. Um, been talking about the lineage in, in uh, Genesis chapter 5 and, and 11 and 25 and 35 and 1 Chronicles chapter 6 and uh, how these lineages are important because they, they point out things to us. They show us where, where we're at in history. They, they, they show us, uh, or I'm sorry, where they were in history at that time where you could match up uh, the historical records that are outside of the, the big biblical narrative outside the Bible and you see how it all matches up. And that's what lineages are really good for. But they're, but they're also good for this. I, I found this, again, while I was studying for the message uh, for Easter. And um, it's, a, it's an every 500-year transition that takes place, okay? Adam's created around 4,000 B.C. And again, we know this because of the lineage in the different places that we find in the Word of God. So he's created around 4,000 B.C., 500 years later, Jared, which is Enoch's daddy, is born, okay, around 3500 uh, B.C., circa 3500. And these are not exact 500 years, but these are in a time frame of 500 years, okay? 500 years later, after Enoch's daddy was born, 500 years later, Enoch had been born, and then he is raptured out of this place. And, and God gives us our first... Um, our first look at what the rapture looks like where it says that Enoch was not because God took him. Don't you know that one day the church will not be because God is going to take us from this earth. 500 years later, the flood came in 2500 BC, somewhere around that time. 500 years later, Abraham was called around 2000 BC. 500 years later, Moses was called around 1500 BC. BC. 500 years later, David, the great king, is put in position and called out of the field of the shepherd to, to, uh, to, um, to, to, to run the kingdom for God, the nation of Israel. Now, the kingdom of, of Israel, that's in 1000 BC. 500 years later, the temple was rebuilt after it had been destroyed by the Babylonians. 500 years later, Jesus is born into this earth. Okay, that takes us from the Old Testament all the way into the New Testament. Every 500 years, something critical took place in the history of the kingdom of God. Every 500 years, up until the time that Christ is born. Now let's go 500 years beyond Christ. Rome is ruling when Christ is here. Now this is so interesting to me again. Rome is in charge. Rome is ruling the world. But about 500 years after Christ is born, Rome is pulled down. Rome is conquered somewhere around, around 470, 480 uh, AD, somewhere around in there. But it's in that 500-year frame that, that Rome is conquered. Now, here's what's interesting with that. Because it was, it was, around, it was around that time, uh, 300, 400 uh, AD, that uh, that Christianity was legalized, that Christ Christianity was put on the map. Christianity, they were they were able to come out of the caves and and uh, and uh, and and start worshiping God, and, and churches were growing. And this is when they started building the the big cathedrals and things and those type of things. But but after Christianity's legalized, guess what happens? Rome falls. Rome falls to the ground. Okay, 500 years after Rome fell. Now, that was around 500 A.D. 500 years later, the Great Schism took place, which, the, which was the separation between the Eastern Church and the Western Church, or the Eastern Orthodox Church, as it's known today, and the Roman Catholic Church, as it is known today. So that, that, that happened around 1000 A.D. So you had a, a, another incident in 500 years, or, or around 1500 A.D. And then here we come. Come. Here we come. I'm sorry. 500 years after the, the the Great Schism took place, then we have the Reformation that took place. This was around 1500 
AD, somewhere in that time frame, 1517, somewhere in that time frame. And, uh, and, and when this happened, the Great Reformation is when people started within the Catholic Church because at that time everybody was Catholic. That's what you did. You went to the Catholic Church. But they started reading and, and people started understanding that faith was something that wasn't being taught and uh, and other things that were going on in the Catholic Church. So you had a you had people who pulled out of the Catholic Church and that's why we're here today. That's why there's a church of God out here because the Protestant movement began. And uh, and now you have all of these different denominations and that have separated from the Catholic Church, but that was around 1500 um 1500 AD. And now here we are 500 years later. 500 years later, in that same time frame, 500 years later would be 2000, the year 2000. We're in 2020, so it's still in that same time frame. And notice the things are happening right here. Let, let, me, let me get on here. 500 years later, and, and, and we're studying, and, and people want to know, are these the last days? What's going on? Something's happening. There's a change in the air. Transition is going on. Are we going backwards? Are we going forwards? Or are we getting out of here? What is happening right now in the church world, in the kingdom of God? Well, we are in one of those 500-year transitions. It's my belief that things are changing because we're getting ready to get out of here and things have to change according to scripture. I've got a few scriptures I'm going to read here and you, you just get the, um, get the address as I read it and you can look them up later, but I'm going to read these to you. Second Timothy chapter three, verses one through five, but understand this, that in the last days, there's going to come a time of difficulty for people are going to be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, Proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable. You can't appease them. Slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good. They're treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. And, and, and Paul said, you know what to do with these people? He said, stay away from them. He said, avoid people like this. Avoid people that you can't appease. You, you can't Please, everybody, anyways, just don't even try to go down that road. Second Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Knowing this, first of all, that scoffers are going to come in the last days with scoffing, following their own selfish or sinful desires. And they're going to say, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. First John chapter 2, verse 18. Children, it's the last hour. And as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so many and so now many Antichrists have come, therefore we know that it is the last hour. When was this written? 2,000 years ago, and it was the last hour back then. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom is going to be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Now, I'm going to tell you what. Th this thing that's happened uh, with with uh, with the, the shutting down of the churches and all that, and they said, I know there's a bunch of craziness going on. I, I, I read a news article just a while ago uh, before we started uh, in Chicago, with where the uh, the mayor there, the city is is, uh, and one of them's our church, one of our Church of Gods that opened up, and they're getting fined because they opened up. I know all that thing, all that stuff is happening, but I want to tell you something. The 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 gospel of Jesus Christ has gone out like it never has, and it's on the internet like it's never been. And it's going around the world. That prophecy is being fulfilled right now. It is going around the world. Around the world. As we speak right now, it's going around the world. People around this whole globe are, hit, are listening to the, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and listen, I don't think it would have happened the way that it's happening if we hadn't gone through what we're having to go through right now. God's working this thing out. We could have never planned this. We would have never done anything like this. Let's shut down the churches so all the churches would get online and push the gospel out. We would have never done that. That would have never been in our plans. But God had a plan. 
And, and, and so God, God's saying, I'm ready to come back. This message has to go out around the world. And here it is. It's going out around the world like it never has before. Let's go to, uh, go to, to Joel chapter 2. Verse 28, it shall come to pass afterward that I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons, your daughters are going to prophesy. Your old men are going to dream dreams. Your young men are going to see visions. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Matthew chapter 24 Verse 32, from the fig tree, learn its lesson. We know this because I did this lesson for a couple weeks in a row. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out leaves, you know that summer is near. So also know when you see all these things, know that he is near. Who? Jesus at the coming of the very gates. Uh, Matthew 24, verses 7 and 8, nations going to rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, earthquakes, various places. All these are but the beginnings of birth pains. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. For here's what's going to happen when you know the time of the end is near. Many are going to run to and fro and knowledge is going to increase. Hear me. I'm talking about a 500 year transition all the way back, all the way back to uh, right after Adam. From 500, 500, 500, all the way through the Old Testament to 500 years when Christ is born to 500 years when Rome falls to 500 years when the Great Schism takes place to 500 years when the Protestant movement begins to 500 years right now up to this where we're living right now today in this age. Every 500 years there's a transition. I didn't even know it. I had no idea I was preparing a message for Easter. And I started saying, wait a minute, this is 500 years later. This, it's about 500 years later. This is in that 500 year. This is 500 years later. And I, and I Googled it. I said, I said, wait a minute, let me see if anybody else has seen it. And of course, I'm late to the show as always, because this is something that has been studied out. It's interesting to a lot of people. And, and it's interesting to me right now in our generation because we're there in that 500 year transition period. We're there and all this craziness is taking place. And all, as I preached on Sunday morning, there's a storm and it's a perfect storm with nature and mankind and prophetic word taking place. The perfect storm is happening. It's that 500 year where something happens, where God does something in his kingdom. And uh, so <laughs> within these last 500 years, I wanna, let, me, let me run down the list for you real quick here. Within these last 500 years, I gave you all those scriptures. The greatest sign given that these are the last days was an absolute miracle. And that is Israel becoming a nation again. Should have never happened coming back to their homeland. Within these last 500 years, we've gone through two world worlds, uh, war, world wars, World War I, World War II, nation rising against nation. Within these last 500 years, nature is ramping up. Earthquakes in divers places, all these things that Jesus said was going to happen are happening at the same time on a grand scale. Within these last 500 years, knowledge has increased and people are running to and fro. You think about 500 years ago in 1500 A.D., it was a different world back then. But within 500 years, we have airplanes, we have cars, we have air conditioning, we have lights, we have indoor plumbing. <laughs> we, we didn't have 500 years ago, they didn't even know what all that stuff was. But here we are. Why? Because knowledge has been increasing. Somebody says, is that, a, is, that a, is that an evil thing? No, it's a God thing. We're created in the image of God who is a creator. And he gave us the ability to use our minds and to create things with, not as he does out of nothing, but we can create things because we are created in the image of God. So this is, this is a good thing that knowledge is increasing. Within the last 500 years, the world has lost its moral compass. Oh my 
Goodness, the world has lost its moral compass. Within these last 500 years, the church has been flooded with false teaching, false doctrine. We've become cold and indifferent. It's just like the scripture says, we've lost our last, our, our, we've lost our first love. Uh, uh, the church is in a place that, that God's trying to bring it to life, trying to stir it up, trying to stir the hearts of the people up. Within these last 500 years, sons and daughters, have been filled with the Spirit of God and they have gone around this world as missionaries, missionaries. We've got missionaries that have gone out of our church and I praise God for it. We have young people who are interested and desiring to go on the mission field and I praise God for it. But this, all these things have happened and all of a sudden we're, we've come to the end of that 500 year span. We're right there at the end of it. And there's all this stuff stuff, mess, all these things are happening. And, you know, scripture, when Jesus is talking to the disciples, when they say, can you, can you, can you tell us what's going to happen in the days before the temple is destroyed? Well, he, we talked about that and he gives them a lot of things to look for. And some of the things he gave them to look for apply to today also. One of those things being that there, you're going to have to go to court. You're going to have to go stand before the judge. You, you, you're going you're gonna to be put in prison. Hey, listen, did you ever think you'd see the day where not only would they shut down churches, which it happened, it's okay, we're getting through that, but now, but now they're saying the church in certain cities, not ours, in certain states, not ours, thank goodness, are non-essential. The bar is essential. Walmart's essential. You can get some furniture because that's essential. You, you can go over to AutoZone because AutoZone is essential, but the church is not essential. And now they're fining the churches that are opening up in Chicago. They're fining them. And I thank God that the pastors of Chicago, one of them being one of the Church of God fellows up there, is defying that law. Because that's the time to defy the law when they start crossing those boundaries. But I say that to say this, here in America, right here in America, there's an agenda going on behind the scene of what's taking place. And part of that agenda is shutting the church down, shutting the people up, getting Jesus out. They've been trying to get Jesus out of government for years now. They've been taking the Ten Commandments down for years. Public property, take the cross or, or, or take the cross down uh, because it's government property. Don't mix the government up with religion. That was never a part of it, but it is now. These things are happening, folks, because we are in a, we're in the days, the last days, which, again, that 500-year transition, if you go study that, you study that thing out and see what you think about it yourself, but every 500 years, God says this, it's, it's, like, he's, it's like he has a book open. It's like he's got a book open. The first chapter this is where Adam was. I'm going to, in the book, I've created this. I've created not, everything out of nothing. And here I've created man in my own image. And then 500 years later, uh, he turns a chapter as Jared has to be born so Enoch can be born. And then 500 years after Enoch ascends to, to the father because he was not God, just took him. 500 years later, we have a flood that takes place. Every 500 years, something is happening, folks. We're in that period. And, and, and you, can, you can lay the 500-year theory that I call it to the side. Okay, just lay it to the side. That's something that's interesting to me. It's not something that you have to believe. It's something that's interesting to me and I like talking about. But get out your word and all those scriptures that I just read you, how people were going to act, what people were going to do. Uh, uh, Stacy taught on Romans uh, chapter 1, I think, here the last couple of weeks. He's been teaching on Romans chapter 1. Just read Romans chapter 1. And see what has happened with mankind. It didn't just happen back then. It's happening now. They are suppressing the truth. Trying to hold the truth down. Trying to keep the truth down. You, you can't suppress the truth unless you know the truth. And people know the truth, but they don't want the truth. Because the truth requires responsibility. And the truth requires that we are accountable to somebody. That somebody being God himself. That somebody being the judge, Jesus Christ. And people don't want to be accountable, right? That's a hard thing to be accountable, but it's the best thing for us. And it's what God requires. <laughs> so this, the, we, we have to be really careful. And listen, listen, this is not the time. As I said Sunday morning, it's not time to take a break. We don't get any rest. We're getting ready to go home. 
We're getting ready to leave this place. We're getting ready to, to go to that great by and by. <laughs> It's, and it's not a crutch for somebody who may be listening and say, oh, that's just, that's just one of those crazy Christians just trying to believe in something to help them get through life. No, it's not a drug. It's not a crush. It's not a, a crutch. It's not a drink. It's, it's not a pill. It's, it's, not, it's not something just an imagination. This thing is real. And we're getting ready to get out of here. And, uh, and, and so we, we don't have time to take a break. Now, look, we don't have time to rest. We don't have time to, to wallow around in failure. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We don't have time to wallow around in failure. Failure happens. Sin happens. It's not something that we go out to do as a Christian. It's not something that we camp out in. It's not something that we live in because we can't. It doesn't fit us anymore. It bothers us when we, when we sin. It bothers us when we fail. So it's not something that we want to do, and it's not something we hang around in. But here's the fact of the matter. If we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. If we sin, we go to Jesus Christ. If we fail, if something happens and we messed up, you go to Jesus Christ. Lord, forgive me. And instantly he forgives you of that sin. And you go on with Jesus. Because we don't have time to wallow around in the failures. You've got to get yourself up to... One of my favorite movies is Rocky. Not the 20th one or, or however many they did, but the original one specifically. Even though I think he lost at the end of that. I can't remember. It's been so long since I watched it, but I think he lost at the end of that show, but then he comes back and beats him, I believe. But he would not stay down. Rocky Balboa, right? He would not stay down. He kept getting up. And that joker across the ring from him, he, just, he, just, he kept pounding him and he kept pounding him and he kept pounding him and he kept trying to put him out. But Rocky wasn't going out, folks. He, he was determined to win that boxing match. And even though he didn't win the boxing match at the end of the movie, he, he you know what he did win? He won that, that fight of determination. He won that fight of a good kind of pride, not a bad kind of pride. You know the difference, right? Of a good kind of pride. Now, you can't keep me down. I'm not going to stay down. I'm going to get back up. So we don't have time to, to rest. We don't have time to wallow around in failures. We don't have time for rebellious attitudes. Listen, we got to keep ourselves in check. As this thing gets worse, as this world gets worse, we have to keep ourselves in check because we are the church. Remember what I said Sunday, ask yourself who you are. <laughs> and the church needs to ask ourselves who we are. We're children of God and we are the church of the living God, the body of Christ. He's the head, right? So we have to be careful that our attitudes, we have to be careful that the words that we speak, we have to be careful that the conversations that we get into and the reasons we do what we do, we have to be really, really careful that we keep a Christ-like attitude that we keep our eyes set on the goal, that we, are, that we understand this thing, is get, it's time is getting short, short, short. And, and, and somebody might say, well, well John, <laughs> how do you know the coming? Of, you think he's going to come tomorrow? I thought he should have came yesterday. I was hoping he'd come last week, last year, 20 years ago. He might come, he might not come, but you, you might be alive and you might not be alive. What, what's that got to do with anything? right? We have got to live for God like he's coming yesterday. We've got to live for God like, he, like, he, like, the, like the, the, the trumpet is up to the lip of the angel right now, getting ready to blow that thing. And we have to be really, really careful in these last days because if we're going to win G people to Jesus Christ who are hard, they got to see somebody who's been changed by Jesus Christ. So we don't have time to be full of rebellion. We don't have time to wallow in our failures. We don't have time to rest. Jesus is getting ready to come back, folks. Man, it happened again. I was going to show you guys oh, that video that I didn't get to show you last week on the temple. And I hope you get to go, you, you get to go back and, and, and watch that thing. Just punch in on Google and, and Google on the temple there. Now, I gave you that 500-year theory. And you can study it because it's, it's right there in black and white. So that it would give you something else to understand the time frame that we are living in. I can't point you to a verse of scripture 
that says every 500 years God does something. But I can point you to the facts that shows that every 500 years since the creation of man, there's been changes. There have been critical changes that have taken place in the kingdom of God that affects this world. And, and, and those changes are all about the kingdom of God. They're all about that. Every one of them is about that. And so I give you that so that you have something else to chew on, something else to help you to understand that we're getting ready to go home. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Don't get caught up in the affairs of his life, Paul told Timothy. He said, fight the good fight. Be a good warrior. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I love you guys. I love you. I'm going to get off of here just a few minutes earlier tonight uh, because stacy has got to put his titles on. I don't know if he's been able to do that while I'm on here or not, but his titles had to be put on for his, uh, his coming up video. But any comments from anybody before I go? Any questions? Any comments? Thank, uh, let me say this. Thank you, uh, Fair Forest. This past Sunday... Everything went smooth. Everything went well. Everything went good. Um, it was a change. Uh, it's definitely different, of course, but everything went good. And uh, I felt like the service went well, and there was a sweet spirit in the church, in the sanctuary, amongst the people. It was good to see you. Some of you I didn't get to see. Thank you, Sister Cheryl. Some of, some of you I didn't get to see. And uh, tell her husband yours, I said, hey. Um, you stayed home, and that's okay. Uh, you you were expected. If you're not comfortable in being there, if you have conditions that that are uh, that make you more susceptible to this virus, then, then that's the best thing for you to do is to continue watching it online. And we love you. Don't you feel bad about that at all? And uh, so, good Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. I'll see you guys Sunday morning. Those who are able to make it, I love you. I'm praying God's blessings upon you, his favor upon you. May his face smile upon you and shine on you in the name of Jesus Christ. I, and again, I apologize for the videos earlier. Talking about some video editing, my goodness. Bye-bye, y'all. Love you.